All right, welcome back to the Competitive Edge Podcast. I have an awesome guest today. He is just a stellar athlete, a stud out there in the hybrid and OCR space. Uh, he is a father of two boys, 17 and 20, personal trainer, fitness coach, member of Get It Core Fitness. Uh, he's just torn up the, pit, the podiums for DECA, High Rocks, Spartan. Um, he's beat guys like CJ DeRosa. Um, he has the DECA uh, World Podium, sorry, the World Championship podium twice in the World Championship, but also doubles age group world champion with uh, Joe Rivera. So a million other things we could talk about, but I'm going to let him get into it. Um, before we jump in, let's always show some love to our DECA events and High Rocks events in the area that uh, we love so much. So we have High Rocks Dallas coming up, High Rocks Miami coming up in March. Uh, also, DECA has uh, a sweet little challenge. Uh, you can do co-ed or um, male and female Ramalam. Uh, team challenge and then also deck of europe is starting to come in uh surface here so bruce jackson tell us a little bit about yes, yourself ah uh, you know i hate that question man what <laughs> wait, wait uh you know in a nutshell know. in a nutshell say um we were sitting at a bar i didn't even know who you are and i'm like hey what do you do I don't know what I do. I just, I just try to compete and have fun. I'm a weekend warrior. Like I always tell everybody, I mean, I'm just an old guy trying to reverse the the hands of time. You know what I mean? Absolutely, man. Um, I mean, that's, that's a cool thing about it. Like when you're out there, I see you racing, like you're, you're just sharp as a razor, um, but you're making it fun too. So that, that's good stuff, man. Thank um, you. So obviously, you know, let's just elephant in the room. Um, me and Bruce didn't really know each other. Yeah. Frenemies. We didn't even know, we didn't even know each other. Um, all we knew is like, I'm crazy confident. He's crazy confident. Um, and I gave my, I worked my ass off for this deck of mile event, but made like a rookie move. Um, my team, I'm not gonna mention any names, but my team, what the concourse that we created, we tried to emulate, um, the concourse at get it core fitness where you run around do a station run around do a station we measured it with the yardstick um but somewhere along the lines our coach said hey when you finish the station run to a cone and that's where you'll do it but every single time we ran it shaved off a little bit more and more off of my run so i was just really excited because every station I was stellar. I really worked my ass off. I was that side of my body. I probably almost fainted after. Um, and Bruce, knowing his statistics and his numbers, he called bullshit. And he, and I, that just rubbed me off the wrong way. Um, and that's kind of how our relationship started. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, honestly, think about it a year ago today, if, if you had yeah. told either one of us, Hey, you'd be doing this and B I'd be one of your first guests and be like, nah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was just like, it was like hashtag beat Bruce. It was, it was cool, man. And then, and then we saw, we saw you at the uh, the FG. It was F F U A. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Paul uh, was running that event, um, and it was the first time I was competing against friends that I knew. So it was weird. It was like I felt like I was back in minor league hockey when I was like playing for Jacksonville, but then I was playing against my old team, South Carolina. So it was. It was crazy. It was, it was, it was an event. You guys really tore it up that day. You guys killed it. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. And it was a good way. Like, uh, I mean, last year was a big year and that was an amazing way to kick it off. I think it was in January, that event. Um, yeah. and it was just a good way to just kind of kick off, uh, you know, just an awesome year. Yeah, um, but yeah, and it just, you know, it wasn't that I was calling nobody. I, people that don't know me i i'm just i i just i i can't i'm the guy that says the thing that everybody won't say <laughs> so it wasn't that i was trying to call you out i was just you know I, maybe i was a little passive aggressive about it at first but i'm not trying to step on toes you know i was i was just trying to be like hey man how how how'd you do that <laughs> it, it was i mean it, it was a fire underneath my ass that I needed. It was cool though. It was almost, it was, it was definitely like a healthy, healthy competition. And then it got like a little nasty. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But all, and even, all, yeah. even, even past that Remember, like, then we ended up, um, you came back here. We go into DECA, we do the DECA mile and Joe's like, Hey, I'm going to put you up against Daniel. 
Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, in my head, I'm like, what if, what if he really did run a 19? <laughs> <laughs> and the know, thing I is, like, that, that didn't work out right because I, I planned on practicing deck of strong. Like, I last minute, two weeks before the event, um, my running wasn't all there because I was training with Jade from the UK and her training wasn't like, there's like no running involved. Like, it's all just compromised running. <laughs> Um, yeah. So going from the OCR guy doing 50 miles a week to just bodybuilding and going through this heavy foundation stage, um, Deca Strong was my focus. And then I signed up the night before at like midnight for Deca Strong for like one o'clock. And when I got there, all of Joe's stuff was gone. Um, and I'm like, crap, I'm all <laughs> like motivated. I had like, I had some pre-workout, like I was crazy excited. And then I get there, there's just no one there. So I hit up Joe. It's like, Hey, um, what's going on? He's like, well, you can, you can race with Bruce tomorrow. I'm like, fuck, I'm not really prepared for that. <laughs> I'm not really prepared for that, but okay, let's do it. But when I yeah. competed against you, like you could really tell like guys who's listening, like this guy has his splits like lined up. He knows his targets at that time. I was really like kind of like rookie into it, to be honest. I was just head over heels for, for high rocks. Um, and Deck was just kind of just like a, something to do. Um, but this guy is so detailed in everything he does. And when I went to do that race, that was the first time I raced. I didn't race my own race. I raced his race. Like I tried to like forget about any kind of plans I had focused on. It was like, okay, just, just follow Bruce. And it didn't work out. I ended up blowing up. I ended up getting frustrated. Um, he killed it. It was cool just to see your sons uh, watching you just dominate. That, that was cool, man. Um, it was, yeah. uh, that was, that was a lot of fun. And, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't know that I could have, I don't know that I would have hit that number if I wasn't racing you, you know, yeah. sometimes, you know, he always puts me up against Ryan or, or Noel. And yeah. I, I know in situations, Noel and I are going to be dead on even, um, Ryan's going to smoke me, you know? So it's like, I, it was unknown and I was, uh, you're right. We had a little bit of a pass. So I had a bit about that to prove. Plus I was, that was right at my peak last year i was yeah everything was if deca worlds was that that weekend would have been a different story i wouldn't yeah, have been you, three twos like i would have been at right least plan. two ones yeah yeah i was i was the assault bike i was like i think the assault bike killed me that day it was like a minute and 15 seconds or something like it yeah. just wasn't the, my day right but then afterwards i mean i think i think the competitive uhness of all that helped us kind of you know talk about it i was like hey look at this is what i see this is what i think you know yep. um you know, take my word for it or don't i don't know but you know this is what i'm i'm seeing uh um, yeah. based on and i think since then it's all good baby yeah i mean I, and that's what i can relate to 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 sports as as a kid or in playing minor league or whatever college it's where like you have beef with guys like in hockey like you could fight someone like knuckles on face, you know, for three minutes and then you go in the penalty box, but you're in the penalty box and you're like, Hey man, nice uppercut. Like, Hey, nice job out there. You want to go again? Like, like, <laughs> it's a, it's a mindset or after the game, you're, you're buddies, you're, you're high fiving each other. But when you're on the ice, you leave it on the ice. Um, yeah, I think that's what we I can do, but yeah, I can 100% guarantee you if, if we were playing hockey, we wouldn't have ever have been friend of me because I would not have wanted to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not like, something. Yeah, man, you probably did it. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a weird sport, man. It, it is, it is a weird sport. Like you're, you're like terrified and excited to be in a fight. Like you're terrified, but you're, when you do it, it's like, All right, let's do it. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's cool. Um, yeah. But yeah. And now, you know, that's a great example of, you know, two guys that really work hard. Number one, number two, two guys that are very confident. Number three, like we just love, we're very passionate about what we do and we clash at that moment. But at the end of that deck of mile, when we hashed it out, you know, he even came over and said, Hey, good job. Or I said, Hey, good job. Or I think he gave you a pound or something. Um, and then he kind of gave me some advice. And then also before the world championship, he gave me advice, a strategy that um, I was working on, I think like a month before the world championship. And because of that, I think I went from like fifth to second going into the burpees. So, nice. you know, that was good advice. And I really appreciate that. So, um, but now he's beating me up in Bruce camp on Thursdays, occasionally hockey's over. So I'll be back there eventually. Good. 
we need some more. It's everybody's been injured, so it's been all. I mean, not that yeah. I don't have a problem with the ladies, but every single person in our gym is injured right now. So it's I'm not even working out, you know. So it's like, well, the, the ladies they bring it, man. They work hard. They do. They do. That's cool. But there's so, uh, there's no guys right now. <laughs> My guys are hurt. Yeah, I'll try to get there. Um, so competitive edge. When you think about yeah. competitive edge, um, what comes to mind? I mean, that's that's the only fuel that I really have is I'm a I'm competitive at everything. I mean, anybody that knows me, I'm um, I'm an upstate New Yorker. I'm argumentative. I'm I'm that's just how I am. I wanna I want to uh, I, I'm always in a state. I feel like my whole life of uh, out to prove everybody wrong i need that um i i need to be i got that whole thing that like with jordan and how he'd like make stuff up about people just to like get motivated sometimes like i'm I, i'm i feel like i'm i'm so competitive that i need something i i always need some kind of competitive thing or i'm just unhappy yeah all the time it's, yeah and that's my wife asks me sometimes like why like why do you race and like it's just, it's that bug. Like it's a, it's, you can say it's ego maybe, but for me, it, I feel like just knowing if, if I worked this hard and I put it to test and I outdo 90% or a hundred percent of the people I go against, it's for me, it, it's, that's my purpose. That's what I, that's why I work out all the time and train. Yeah. And you know, the old saying, the old Spartan saying, like, you don't know, you'll know at the finish line. I mean, there's a lot of truth to that in every, everything we do every race not just spartan i mean and that's when people ask us that it's like you really you should just go do it and yeah. then do 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 something like that and feel that what that feels like at the end the sense of accomplishment or that sense of oh my god i can do way better here absolutely you know? some people have that. that some people don't no i i, I agree and it's some people i mean that's that i've been friends with that i just I no longer serve me as much because you're, we're just on a different, you know, I think of it as like a, like a rocket that goes off out to outer space. Um, someone said this in the speaker event where like, you know, they just detach from one thing and go higher and detach. Like we're on a different altitude yeah. than other people that were in our past. Like, I, mean, I think my wife, my, my daughter said to me, it's like, Hey, do you miss your high school best friend? And he was my best man and stuff like that. And um, it's like, yeah, but at the same time, we're just not aligned. You know, it's, yeah. They're okay People. with the standard, you know, New York City. Get gray hairs by the time you're 25. You know, um, I always wanted to work in New York City when I was a kid. You know, growing up in uh, Southern Connecticut, but it's just we're just not aligned. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and that's you know that's that's life, man. People people continue to grow. We don't just get to you know twenty five and like okay, we're adults now. We're all going to be the same for the next fifty years. That's not how it is. We continue. Exactly. to go whatever path we're on and you know sometimes they line up sometimes they don't yeah now um what was the parent dynamic when you were playing sports like <clears throat> you mentioned like soccer and everything like that in the past yeah i mean I, I didn't play much in in school i was a musician so um when i was younger i mean of course i played soccer i mean that's what you did in upstate new york played soccer and basketball lacrosse was big but you know that's that's a big regret of mine that i didn't get into that um, when I was younger, cause that just looks amazing. And I know, um, both my sons played it and it's just, I wish every time I see him play it, I wish that I had been more involved in something like that. But, you know, I kind of straight, I, I stayed away from, from contact, from, um, from anything that was remotely physical, uh, for a while. Um, I was a very skinny little kid and, you know, I was awkward. And so I, I liked soccer. I liked indoor soccer. I liked playing basketball. Um, yeah. But it wasn't, you know, we were kids. Like you had, you played soccer and then you, your season was over. It's not like now where they just play all year long and it's, yeah, it never it ends. Was. And it was, yeah, you had your season and it was over. And then you had basketball season and that was over for a year. Like you yeah. didn't even practice it afterwards, you know, <laughs> at least I didn't. I mean, it just wasn't like that, you know, maybe for a couple of kids, but you know, there was just no outlets for it. Um, so I, I mostly, I, I music took over first, so I was a uh, I was all about that for the majority of my. I was a drummer. Nice, that was my first guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, so yeah, I think I was opposite in the physicalness. Um, I tried to play basketball 
I tried to play soccer, but I was that guy slide tackling and hurting people. <laughs> yeah. um, and basketball, I just kept falling out people. I didn't even get a chance to play because I kept getting fallen out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. um, so when football, <laughs> football came and hockey and checking, man, oh, my God, just physicalness, just yeah. something about just laying out that other body in front of you and overcome it. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I know yeah, that so, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so – when it comes down to like a dad and like for like my dad, my dad was a New York city guy, played ba- basketball, but never played professional anything or in college or never played hockey. We just, our hockey, hockey rink was right next to our apartment. When we moved to Connecticut. So it was just coincidence. I'm three and a half years old walking in. So what was your, what was your connection with your parents and sports? Uh, my parents split up when I was younger. Uh, my dad had moved to the South. So I, my mom, it was just me and my mom. She was a single mom, raised me. Um, yeah. My dad and I really didn't, you know, once I hit like teenage years, my dad and I were not, we weren't good. We're, we're great now. Um, but yeah. it, it took a lot. Um, we just, he just, you know, we, we just weren't that, uh, we just weren't close. You know, he had moved to Atlanta. Um, I would go down and see him, but, once I hit like 13, you know, he had been, he had gotten remarried and I just, we just, you know, it just wasn't for me. So, uh, we kind of didn't talk for a long time. Um, and then, uh, I ended up moving to Atlanta after high school and, uh, we re, you know, rekindled stuff there, but, um, yeah, it wasn't, sports wasn't a thing. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I mean, that's why, um, I didn't, I didn't, man, I didn't even start running until I was like 39. Yeah, same same here, man. I mean, I ended up seeing like Spartan races on YouTube, and I was like, "All right, I should probably run more than a half a mile now." Yeah, um, right. Because the hockey, you don't have to do that. It's just sprints and plyometrics. So, um, what uh, I like a question like, "What's a good? What's a quote that your mom used to say to you, like before games or after games?" Um, don't get hurt. Yeah, don't get hurt. <laughs> um, my parents say that, and I don't get hurt. Um, I'm like, don't say that. You're manifesting it. Um, so yeah, I mean, like my dad used to say, like, no good. Uh, so too much of something is no good for nothing. So if I just, you know, if only I'm running all the time too much, then you know, something, some in his eyes, like you're gonna get hurt. Do something. Like you, you got to take it easy. The sports stuff, to be honest with you, neither one of my parents gave that to yeah. me. Like I, I didn't, I didn't have that at all. Like. Uh self-made yeah. i like it well it wasn't just that it was like i knew um yeah i mean it, in a way sure it's that um but yeah i just uh i just didn't do that stuff when i was younger right? it wasn't i i partook just because i mean i was pretty good at soccer but i just didn't i just didn't care you know it wasn't i was too busy chasing girls and you know playing yeah, the drums like that yeah. dude i would get home from school and I would go right to the basement and I wouldn't come out till six o'clock when my mom came home and my, my neighbors hated me. That's all I did was play the drums all day long, all day long, all day long. That's all I did. <laughs> all right. So at least you were good at it. My parents tried to get me into doing the no, trumpet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you were good at it, but I started playing the trumpet and I'm just like spitting into this instrument metal piece. And I would get off the uh, off the bus and just sprint to the front of my house, get the trumpet out, and just start horning the thing. It was terrible. I wasn't good at it. Um, it was quite well, trumpet's not fun though. <laughs> no, it's just like it's just, just three little things, and I don't know. I it's just not my thing. Like I would go to band practice and try to follow the notes, and I just I don't know if I had ADD or something, whatever. I couldn't stand yeah. still. It's like it's not fun. Yeah. So, but yeah, going back to the family thing, like. Um, you know, my family's kind of funky too. Um, you know, everything always looks so great on the outside, but you know, for example, like my dad had a second marriage, was married before my mom, um, and had two daughters, um, that were six years younger than me. I'm sorry, older than me. And, uh, I never knew that they were not my real sisters till I was like 13. Um, and then that's when kind of drama happened and wow. Yeah. And then they left to the military at like 19 and 20. And then I pretty much haven't talked to them since. And I literally just like wow. reconnected with them this year. Just, just kind of like, as you get older, you're like, 
like what what, what are we do doing? we have like, right. like what's yeah. you know did our parents tell us not to talk to you like whatever like right. we're just talking to them you know i'm not letting them in all the way but you know we're talking we're still yeah family so i hear you on that man um so Some, sometimes we're a product of what not to do yeah you know what i mean oh i hear you on that man like, it's that's that's, but that's, that's, I feel like I have more of that than, oh, I have this amazing thing I can just emulate. Uh, it's more like, okay, yeah, just don't do that. It should be good. <laughs> I know. And it, I guess I kind of resented them a little bit because, um, like, I wasn't able to do what you did. Like, when I was in high school, it was like, be home by 930. Don't do what your sister did. Don't drop out of college. So I was like the first kid to go to college. So it was like that always that mindset to be the first and yeah that's what drove me but also resented them at the same time so it's for nothing um so i, I hear you man on that um so talking about your kids right so um i did listen to a little bit of another podcast which is pretty sweet um your your boys are just on fire stealing podiums like what are they up to now i know a couple of years ago you guys as a family were just tearing up races right yeah, well, that's that's how this whole thing started for me. Really, was I mean, I it I did it first, but my first thought was, oh my god, my Dominic is my oldest son, Vincent is my youngest, and um, the time I did my first race, I mean, I was like, yeah, you got to do this. You, you're gonna love this. Um, yeah, but they're they're just. I have always been extremely tight with them, but it's it's a lead by example thing. You know what I mean? It's like they need to know boundaries, not that are necessarily set on them, but they need to know when the boundaries have been crossed. Um, so I always kind of allow them the freedom of to make the bad choices before I would be like, well, you can't do that. You can't do that. And it's like, yeah, you know, it, you know, you shouldn't do this. I always told them school, school's your job. I have my job, right? We can't go on vacations. We can't, we can't do stuff if I don't go and do my job. You're not allowed yeah. to do stuff if you don't do your job. You only have one job and you can do whatever you want for the most part. Yeah. Um, so we have, we've always been very, you know, they're, they're good. They understand it and I think they respect it. And, you know, we started racing together. It was, it was so cool, man. I mean, it, I can't, like I miss, it's almost, it's different now you know, with it, that they're not, that they're off doing their thing. And, and it's for me anyways, it's not the same as it, as it used to be and what it was. Uh, but it was, there was that three years there that it was just amazing. And uh, now, you know, my oldest is down at USF. He's, um, he's a sophomore down there. He's going to be a PT uh, trying to stay in the sports yeah. Um, the sports world with that. And then my youngest, you know, he's, he's uh, the number one ranked um, number one ranked javelin junior in the state right now. Yeah. Um, and ironically, the only reason he's doing javelin is because of Spartan. <laughs> he was a cross country yeah, yeah. runner and they were at practice for track for cross country. And they, Vin was like, Hey, let me, let me throw the, uh, let me throw the javelin. They're like, ah, you can't throw the javelin. And he chucked it like four feet away from the freshman record. And they're yeah. like, um, yeah, you're going to do this now. Yeah, you're signed up. <laughs> and now he's, it's, he's you know, but they're, the one thing I always taught him, if you're going to do something, do it. Don't half-ass yeah. it. Like, go after it and do it. And All they're both, when, they, when they're into it, it's, they're into it. And they, you know, they're, Vin is, uh, um, he's, he's amazing with technique and it's pretty surgical. We're already starting to get all these, all these offers already not, you know, coach, I got coaches text me. I just had one today text me one yesterday. Yeah. Um, and the big ones haven't even really started coming in yet. I mean, he's the junior year just started. So it's, that's pretty cool. Um, you don't think that, you know, when you have little boys like, Oh, he's going to be a football star. It's like, yeah. nobody says, Oh, he's going to throw the javelin. <laughs> it's like, you, you know, you just don't know they fall. In but this is awesome, little... right? You're going to end up yeah. backdooring a scholarship through something that Spartan basically gave us in essence. Yes. If you think about it, you know, it's the sliding doors or whatever, who knows? Mm -hmm. um, so it's super cool, you know, but they, we still are uh, really tight. Um, I always try to get Dominic to do a race. There's a stadium down in Tampa in May and like, yep. we always try to goad him into it. And he's, 
he doesn't really run and do that stuff anymore, but he'll he'll go do it. He's still in phenomenal shape. I mean, he's he's uh you know he still lifts weights. He's doing that college thing. He does yeah, bench yeah. and biceps every day. Yeah, it's all about uh, <laughs> yeah. doing it for the gram or whatever it is. Um, yeah, right. But yeah, man, leading by example. I mean, it's like, what if you were standard? What if you were okay with being the standard dad that's out there in America now with dad bod, dad bod belly? and working all day and just not doing much you know it was never never going to happen i coached them at everything from day one there was nothing until it was to the point where i was like okay like dom had gotten to high school he's playing football freshman for toblin who's the coach over at bulls now i think they went to state you know pb was going to state i'm like okay well i can't teach you anymore now you're off to him but i taught everything whether they played, yeah. if they played flag football, soccer, baseball, I was on the team. I was coaching. I don't care. I was mm-hmm. coaching. Maybe not the head coach, but I was coaching because I just yeah. was like, Involved. yeah, I, I, you know, I, I want to be there. I don't want to be the guy on the sideline. Like I want to be there. And, and I'm the, they'll both tell you that I am, I am not a um, daddy ball coach. Yeah. They hated a lot of the times that I was the coach <laughs> Yeah, or on the coaching staff because you know you're you're just nothing's ever good enough not that nothing's ever good enough you know what i mean like you can do yeah, better for you example, know what you do like wrong. uh like my daughter savannah i coach her they give the, a hard hat award to the hardest worker of every game that we play and she was second to last out of all the players to get it but she probably deserved it on day two you know what i mean same same you know it's every like, single yeah yep my we have to do the same like, thing when does savannah get it and i'm like I'm just trying to work, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could um, give it to her every game, right? Yeah. So yeah. she's, she's awesome. She's so cool. Like, um, she, she doesn't, um, take penalties. She's not mean out there. She just has a great presence of just working hard for her team. And that's the stuff we leave by example all the time. Yes. Uh, that goes a long way. So, uh, what is your greatest accomplishment as a father? Yeah. You, you know, you sent those questions and I saw that and I was just like, I don't know when, I guess if I'm ever at a point where they're like, Hey, you should say goodbye to your family because your life's over. Then maybe I can answer that question. But I mean, I don't know. It's like, I I don't where they are every day is like, okay, that's awesome. I don't have anything in particular that I can point. The one thing I will say is and I credit my, my ex-wife, their mother as well to this. Like we committed, even though we split, we committed, like we are, we are on the same level as far as raising the boys and they will be raised as men. And in this day and age, in this fucked up ass world that we have going on right now, I mean, we need men, we need Mm -hmm. men, men. So they are confident. Um, they are respectful. Um, and they're men. And that's, that's, I think, the biggest thing because uh, we're going to need those I think in a few more years yeah and I I, I like asking that question because when you, when you wrote that in there confident men I, that's that's huge you know like with our girls we try our best to um, not so much like confident women but just like helping mold our girls into um, being self-reliant you know what I mean not having to right. rely on XYZ out there and yeah, we joke around like she'll say, like, "Hey, Daddy, what's that building?" And I was like, "Oh, it's a hotel." And she's like, "Oh," and she's like, "Oh, maybe that's a good place to work." And I was like, "Well, you see all those rooms there? That's like a hundred dollars a room. There's three hundred rooms in that building. Do you want to be working in that building, or do you want to own that building?" She's right. Like, oh, I want to own that building. So we're trying to build like little entrepreneurs, um, and it's cool. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. And you know that you have to, not that the world is, is fucked up. I mean, I just think that it's, it's, there's a lot of distractions and, and um, we just don't have, there's, there's too much. uh, uh, I don't know what the word is. It's just, there's too many things that now are getting the way of reality, I think. And it's not about having them be, so masculine that it's like you know insulting or or offensive it's more about be you you don't 
display leadership qualities, but understand when to use them. You don't always have to be the leader. You don't have to be aggressive like that, but understand when something is like, you know what, that's not right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's like, know your place, but be assertive. Don't be, don't be followers and whatever you do. Don't be followers. Yeah. I hear you on that. And there's a lot of people that are followers and there are a lot of people that are leaders and, um, there's a lot of friends that I've had that just kind of want to just like mimic or just do what we're doing, but they're not the friend that says, Hey, you probably shouldn't be going to Wendy's after hockey game. Like you should probably right. shouldn't be doing that. Um, yeah. You know, or, Hey, you probably shouldn't be drinking cause you had four drinks. You know, it's just whatever, man, everything's cool. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's, let's dive into um, what events you do now. So, you do OCR. What else do you do? So everybody knows. Right now, I'm just um, um, OCR, the DECA, and uh, High Rocks. Um, I guess order of importance right now would be High Rocks, DECA, OCR. Um, I uh, last year was a good year for me, and I, I kind of have noticed this pattern where I'm. With OCR, it's about every three years, I kind of have a really good year. And then I kind of float away a little bit. And every three years, I kind of come back and float. And I don't know if that's a disinterest thing. And I don't know if that's just circumstantial. I don't know what it is. Um, but I've started to, you know, from when I first got into this and being like, I want to do everything. I want to go to every race every weekend. I want to be gone. A lot of that had to do with the boys, you know, Yeah. Um, because they wanted to go away. They were loving it. I can't even imagine if I was a kid and my dad was taking me to Spartan races every weekend. I mean, can you freaking imagine? There's no way. That yeah. wasn't even like a possibility. Like once a year, maybe you could do something fun like that. We would do it all the time. Um, but to win stuff correctly and to go after a goal is I think the longer you make those goals, um, you, obviously there's more pressure on them when you do stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I think that sense of training towards something um, has become a little more meaningful now that they're out. Now that it's not just like a race every weekend. Now I'm like, let me pick and choose what I want to do here. Um, yeah. Because uh, th like last year was the series, the Spartan series. That was, that was one of the big ones last year that I wanted. Um, so um you know, so, so really, I think I want, there's some high rocks stuff is really got my interest right now. I, uh, I really want to, I think 2024, I really want to really go after that. Um, I'm going to do some, some Spartan stuff this year and some DECA stuff. Uh, of course, DECA, I love DECA. Um, Hopefully it's not. I, I know they have it in San Antonio this year, which would be nice because I don't think I would go back to <laughs> Atlantic City again. That was kind of not fun. But um, but anyway, go back to what I was saying. I just it's it's about now long longer term goals now. Now that it's just me and I'm actually competing towards some stuff and I'm trying to you know build like a legacy or a, a something that hopefully people look back on and say. Yeah. Hey, this dude was pretty badass for a little while. And that's kind of what I want, you know? So, but there's anytime I do something new, I want to win it. And Irox is the new thing. Plus, I think it's the most worldwide championship, like the, the most thing that I would consider a worldwide championship if you were to win it. It's an actual world champion, not just an American. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's sure. so. It's so like, I mean, it's, it's, it's probably least popular here. You know, it's probably more popular in Europe. Yeah. I mean, that's it. The whole thing is just exciting. Um, just to see how you break things down. I mean, you literally dominated OCR, then jumped into DECA and focused on that a couple of years, dominated that. And now you, you're just jumping into high rocks, but you jumped into high rocks quickly and you and Joe Rivera quickly got, a doubles world record. Uh, is that, record that was a lot of fun. Holding? It is. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. That's that was so much fun. I mean, Joe's just an amazing, amazing person. So I was yeah. glad that I was able to do that with him. And, you know, we had talked obviously afterwards about it. We're going to do it every year. We're going to, you know, but you know, then you get hurt. 
and he gets hurt. Yeah, things things, things <laughs> so, change. But, you but I think it's going to be out of reach for a little while. Yeah, that's cool. We, we kind of just made a pack now. Just like, let's let it stand for a little while. We'll keep doing what we do. If somebody takes it, we'll come back and take it back again. We'll just kind of yeah. treat it like that. Hopefully they put it live on YouTube or something. <laughs> yeah. I'll um, probably be like 60. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. So how do you break up, break down your training? So, uh, when it comes down to, so people know, like, obviously there's a strength phase or there's different phases or, or how would you break down the week? I get two questions. Actually, How would you break down the phases? Say you're training, um, 12 to 15 weeks for one race. And then how would you break down the weeks? Um, so it depends on, on the race, but if we're, I think you need to race races to know, but you need to use races as almost barometers towards, if you're going towards like the world championship or whatever, you need to be racing probably every two to three months at some, whatever it is you're doing to see, you know, kind of measurably where you're at. I, uh, when I, the training for obstacle course racing in Spartan is a complete, completely different training than than um high rocks um even from deca a little bit so um really that question is it, it, i would need a more but like i'm going to train for the deca thing differently mm-hmm. than i'm going to train for the spartan thing um yep. i'm going to train for high rocks differently than i'm going to train for the deca or even the spartan thing so it really kind of just depends on what it is but that kind of goes back to more what I was saying. Like, it's hard to do all those modalities and be good at all of them all at once. It's very difficult. Um, yeah. You have to, and that's why last year the Spartan series worked out so well for me because it was, we were able to do two sprints in the Southeast. And I was like, okay, nobody's beating me in Jacksonville. I don't care. So it's just about the other two. Uh, and with that one, it's running. Run, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And grip work. Uh, DECA is a little bit different. Compromise running with DECA, totally different. Compromise running, like uncomfortable compromise running. I mean, obviously, High Rock is is compromise running, but it's not so uncomfortable um, because it's longer. So they're all different. It just kind of depends on what it is. I mean, I have have my... My, my basics that I do every week, I'm, I'm going to do two to three strength sessions. I'm going to try to get 25 to 35 miles a weekend running on roughly four to sometimes six days, always four to five though. And I'm going to get hit training in regardless. That's, that's, um, that I'm going to do two to three times a week. Um, so there's a lot of two days involved there because I am a big believer in two rest days. I take two rest days a week. Yeah. So a lot of doubling up, but it's about doubling up. If you're going to do, you know, I'm not going to double up on it. I'm not going to do a hard uh, track session or a hard speed work session the day after I do a, a hit workout or a strength workout that has a hundred deadlifts in it. You know, you're just yeah. not going to be, you, so you gotta, you gotta kind of plan it out, but it, helps that I am the trainer and I am the programmer for all the yeah. stuff that I do. And you know, that, that we do at the gym so I can kind of, uh, you know, selfishly program for what I want to do. <laughs> I know that's cool. And you do put together some, some badass workouts. Um, Thank you. hold on one second. I'm going to pause right there. There's, there was some kind of issue here on my recording. It's just saying someone else is recording. I've never seen this before. So it's saying someone else is recording on this account. You can only record in one studio at a time to start the recording in the studio, make sure to end other recordings. So if we can just, this will be saved in here. Can I just close this out and just make sure that we didn't miss that last five minutes? Um, Yeah. Do you need a sec? Cause I can let my dog out earlier. You can kind of tell I wasn't really like, I was kind of frantically like losing. I was like, what the hell is going on? This happens um, all the time to me. Um, <laughs> I know. I, I heard your other one. This has never happened. Like, I pay for this service. This, this service is, like, so solid. Like, even if we lose I service, mean, it, it comes My iPad's out brand new. Shouldn't be that. No, no, it's not that. It's Something's going on. It's saying um, 
another account is recording or something. So I'm just going to log out and log back in, just jump back in. And um, I got like six more questions to ask you. So, yeah, sorry, that's fine. I apologize. All right, we're going to hang up. So you need us? Oh, you're going to call me right back? Cool. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks.